Welcome back to Weave Along with Eloise. I'm Eloise of Finching Field. A couple of months back, I asked a bunch of my tablet weaving viewers, what would you like to see next? And somebody had responded, is there any tablet weaving from Italy? And at the time I said, not that I know of, but wouldn't you know, just a couple of weeks later, I came across a piece from Italy from the 12th century. It was a brocaded piece of narrow work that was found on a cloak from Roger II of Sicily. This mantle was made in Palermo in 1133, a few years after his coronation. It was woven in gold and red silk and was put along the outer edges of this cloak. This reproduction here was done by our friend Ashling, who is a German tablet weaver, also known as Sylvia. Thank you very much for letting me use the image. If you haven't checked out her blog and her patterns, you need to do so. I'll put all the links in the description. She's an amazing resource and I've leaned on her several times for different things that I've done. This mantle, the original work, is beautifully preserved and can be found at the Imperial Treasury in Vienna. Roger II was born in 1095 in Mileto, Italy, the son of Roger the Great Count, who was also known as Roger I, and his wife, Adelaide del Basto. He lost his father at the tender age of six, and a few years later in 1105, his brother also passed. This elder brother, Simon, had been named Count of Sicily, but when he died at the age of 12, that title was passed on to his younger brother, Roger. So he became Count of Sicily under the regency of his mother. So when he turned 16 in the year 1112, he took on that role of Count of Sicily and Calabria. He married his first wife, Elvira, who was the daughter of King Alfonso VI of Castile and his wife, Isabella. Isabella was his fourth wife, and it is thought that she was actually a converted Moor, formerly known as Zaida, but was baptized Isabella when she converted to Christianity. In 1122, Duke William II of Apulia renounced his remaining claims of Sicily, as well as Calabria, in exchange for 600 knights and money for his campaign. And when he died childless, Roger assumed his title of Duke of Apulia and Calabria in 1127. Now the Pope, Honorius II, didn't like this merger of Sicily and Apulia, and he preached a crusade against Roger, including getting his own brother-in-law involved in it to turn against him, but that coalition failed. And in August of 1128, he was invested as the Duke of Apulia. When Pope Honorius passed away two years later in February of 1130, the new Pope, Anticletus II, took power. The papal bull made Roger II king of Sicily, and he was crowned Christmas Day, 1130. And through a series of local skirmishes over the next decade or so, including against Pope Innocent II, who was the next Pope, he became ruler of the kingdoms of Naples and Sicily, which were ruled together for the next 700 years. He gathered distinguished men of many races. He welcomed the learned and he practiced tolerance amongst all creeds and races and languages within his kingdom. He built a powerful fleet and he began to expand his territory and conquering areas along the African coast, including Tunisia, Tripoli, and Cape Bona. And he was named King of Africa in 1148. These acquisitions were short-lived, however, as his successor lost them. Roger had married several times, including second wife Sibylla in 1150, who died in childbirth that same year, and married his third wife Beatrice the following year. Roger died in Palermo in February of 1154 just shy of his 60th birthday. His three older sons had died before his death, and his fourth son, William, inherited the throne of Sicily. Roger's wife, Beatrice, it turns out, was pregnant at the time of his death, and she later gave birth to a daughter named Constance. Now, in a strange turn of events, Constance became queen of Sicily much later. She married Henry IV, who was king of Germany and the Holy Roman Emperor, and 10 years after their marriage, became king of Sicily. Now this cloak, which bears the tablet weaving on it, is an example of this multicultural court in Palermo. It's made from red silk that was imported from the Byzantine Empire. It's embellished with enamel and jewels and embroidery that is typical of the Muslim craftsmanship that was prominent in the area, but it also included Arabic text and Kufic script. And the pearls that are sewn onto it are from the Persian Gulf. It is marked with 528 in the Islamic calendar, which would have been 1133 or 1134. So we know that it wasn't used for his coronation because it was created a few years after, but it was later worn to show power and regality and a symbol of the Normans' victory and new dynasty in Sicily. And it was used in future generations as the coronation cloak 
for the Holy Roman Empire. The inscription on the cloak reads, Here is what was created in the princely treasury, filled with luck, eminence, majesty, perfection, long-suffering, superiority, welcome, prosperity, liberality, brilliance, pride, beauty, the fulfillment of desires and hopes, the pleasure of days and nights without cease or change, of glory, devotion, preservation of protection, luck, salvation, victory and capability in the capital of Sicily in the year 528H. This is the Hijri year. Uh, it's a date in the Islamic lunar calendar. Now, as I've mentioned before, this is a brocaded piece, and I don't do a lot of brocade. I've done a little bit. Here's my example. See, I did some. I didn't particularly enjoy it. Of course, at the time I was still pretty new to tablet weaving and I was experimenting with different methods and I decided that was just not for me. But in the meantime, I really like figuring out how to turn these brocaded pieces into woven in patterns. So I've created a woven in pattern. Now, I do have to admit that I did have a jumping off point. I have to give a nod to Sylvia Dominguez, who puts a lot of patterns on Pinterest. I believe she uses the GTT, the Guntram's tablet weaving thingy system, and I decided to go ahead and retranslate it into the TDD pattern, which is the tablet weaving draft designer. The Sylvia's pattern had three motifs in it. Cloak, I think only has two, but for now we're just gonna stick with these two alternating motifs. So this pattern requires 28 cards, and at least two different colors. You can add a third if you wish. You know how this goes. Loom, cards, yarn, tea. Let's get started. Now, before I warp the loom, I wanted to show you something really quick. I just got these in the mail. They are small two inch wooden tablets and they're super thin. They're wafer thin, maybe a millimeter, and I'm Gonna try these for the first time. I'm really excited about it, see how it works. Now I'm gonna need three blues and one yellow on each card. I got my super sharp scissors over there. The only thing I'm missing is a cup of tea. So I'm gonna go take care of that and we'll be right back. So of course, we've got the basics. We've got the loom, we've got our yarn, got our cards, got some very sharp scissors. We have the pattern, I forgot to add the border cards, so I've just kind of doodled them in. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these onto the floor. It's easier to work. So the first two cards are all blue. Now you could use a different color if you like. I decided to go with the blue border. I'm gonna leave a nice long tail, just two, three inches. I'm gonna hold it against that peg in the front. We're gonna go up and over, and then back and forth through the heddles until you get back to the front. And snip. Same thing as before, following the same path. So you follow a different path, you'll end up on a very different journey. And back up to the front. I'm going to move these a little closer. So the first two cards are going to be S-threaded, and I'm going to thread through the back of the card with the card facing me. Of course, these are not labeled, but let's pretend they are. If your cards are labeled A, B, C, D, clockwise, you will want it facing you, and all the cards will go through the back for S-threaded, and Z will go through the front. All right, so these first two cards are S-threaded, Holes are a little on the small side, but if you have fingernails, like I do, you can also use a crochet hook uh, to pull them through. If you uh, have trouble pinching them with your fingers, you can use a crochet hook to pull them through. And then we're going to tie the ends together. Again, you're not tying it to the peg, you're tying it around the peg. So we'll tie it in a square knot or a surgeon's knot. I like a surgeon's knot. So we go around twice, left over right, and right over left once. 
it's a nice secure knot and it will not uh, come untied. Now there is that groove there. Where's that rubber band I just had? Hang on. A viewer just sent me this tip. So for the shack loom, so if you take a rubber band and put it on the other side of the threads, they won't fall into that little groove. What a great tip. So thank you, viewer. I forget who you are. Editing Eloise will find it. All right, card number two is the same as before. Four threads of blue. Following the same path, of course. I've already lost the scissors for a second. Okay, also S threaded. So through the back of the card. And twice around, and once around, and then scoot all the threads back. And very carefully so you don't push it up against that. Card number three, and for the next 24 cards, really, it's three blues and one yellow. So I'm going to do yellow and blue first and I like to line up the ends three four inches off the end there and then two at a time and then set the yellow aside and do the two blues. And then the two blues. Feeling blue. Must be because it's the weather's turned gray. Yes, the rainy season has finally arrived. The smoke season has now ended. This is also S-threaded, so I'm still going to go through the back. One of them is going to be yellow, and I'm going to have to figure out the positioning of this at the end. So they're all going to be threaded almost exactly the same. There's cards 1 through 8 are going to be S-threaded, 9 through 12 are going to be Z-threaded, and then 13 through 16 S, 17 through 24 Z, and then the last two border cards are going to be also Z. Now if your cards are labeled, the first card, D, is going to be the yellow thread. So I'm going to pretend this is D. I might mark these later, um, either with permanent marker or maybe a wood burner or something, just putting dots or letters or runes, something like that, just to mark the cards. But I haven't done that yet. And I may or I may not. We'll see. I have to decide how useful it would be, and I think it would be terribly useful to have them all labeled but I'm not sure where the wood burner is at this point. And I don't want to use marker because, you know, my handwriting's not terrible, but eh. Okay, so S-threaded. Now this is another one of those patterns where if you have three spools of blue and one of yellow, you could do the speed warping and then flip the, the cards how you need them, if you like. But the speed warping thing didn't work super well on an ankle loom. I mean, it worked okay, but eh. It would work better on a warping board, I think. And then the two different colors. 
Okay, I'm going to pull the yellow thread a little. Get that lined up at the end. There we go. Today is, what is today? The 7th of November, I think. U.S. Election Day is tomorrow, so that's going to be exciting. And uh, I celebrated my dad's birthday this last weekend. We went up to Canada and spent some time with dad. He got his, uh, his cheesecake and I got him a strawberry rhubarb pie, which is his favorite. And uh, yeah, we're talking about getting together for Thanksgiving. Even though they live in Canada, they get to celebrate U.S. Thanksgiving too. It's a nice thing about being an international family is you get to celebrate these holidays twice. Yay, more pie! What else? Uh, Hubby's doing really well, for those who are curious. Um, he's on a little medication vacation for a week. Um, we'll find out in a couple of days when they want him to start it up again. Um, but, you know, every once in a while you kind of have to take a break from things because your body is going through a lot, you know. And, uh, but he's, he's responding really well. The tumors have shrunk considerably, so that's all good news. And uh, we're very hopeful for the future. And we've planned a summer vacation in June, uh, a big summer vacation. We're going to, you ready for it? Going to Europe. We've never been. So, I mean, I, I did spend a summer in Scotland, um, which was amazing. But I was 17, wasn't an old, old enough to do anything, couldn't drive myself anywhere. I was kind of being shuttled around by the, the families who were sponsoring us. I guess you could say sponsoring. It was my my best friend's family. Um, but, you know, we were young. So now as a grown-up, I'd like to do even more and uh, see more of Europe. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm having trouble grabbing these threads again. Let's see. I'm just pinching them. Mm, okay. And what else? Let's see. Oh, my son's uh, eagle ceremony is coming up on the 19th of the month. And I wanted to thank you all again for your support. I know many of you donated to the cause, which I appreciate. And I love every one of you who supported either, you know, by financially or just thinking about him or sending positive thoughts. We appreciate all of it. And uh, so we're going to finally have his big ceremony on the 19th with three other boys in the same troop who also completed their Eagle projects. And it's super exciting. I'm going to film it. Um, I may have to heavily edit it because, um, you know, families might be concerned about having their kids on YouTube, but I will have an edited version with most of the ceremony on there, so you can all see it if you want. Because um, it's it's a pretty awesome thing. I mean, the, these guys work really hard, and uh, it's great to honor these guys for, for their hard work, and honor the families, of course, who supported them along the way.
first thing I need to do is make sure that all the cards are set up correctly. Um, I need to move them into S and Z as is appropriate for each card. So I'm going to work on that. I'm not going to worry about which direction the cards are turned at this point, what position the, the cards are in this way, just this way. Does that make sense? Okay, so S and Z. So the S cards are like this, where the thread comes in through the top and down through. And the Z cards, I'll have to flip it, will come back through the back of the card. The first 10 cards should be threaded S. So I have to make sure they're not hooked on each other. So, S, S, 3, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, that one's hooked, Ugh. 8, 9, 10. Okay, and then the next 1, 2, 3, 4 should be Z. So that's 1, 2, three and four and then the next one two three four will be s one two three four and then the rest of them should be z flip 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 oh, oh that was right okay Z, 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 and Z, and Z. Alrighty, that's phase one. And the next part, I need to make sure that the yellow thread is in the proper position. And this is going to be a little bit more tricky. Now when the cards are set up with A, D at the top, it'll be A, B, C, D. So the yellow in the front here for card number, well, it would be three. It says one on the pattern, but card number three in my setup, D will be closest to me. So I need to turn it so it's closest to me. That's the D position. And then C is down at the bottom. B is far away at the bottom. And then A is at the top farthest from me and then we're going to do that same thing again d will be closest to me c closest but at the bottom b farthest away at the bottom and then a top farthest from me and then we'll do it in reverse so a and then B, and then C, D, and then we're gonna go back up again, D, C, B, A, D, C, B, A, and then A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D, and lastly, A, B, C, D again. So A, B, C, and D. Okay, so all the cards should be lined up in order. I do have some tension issues a little bit on the edges, but that should weave out as I go along for the first couple of picks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put the thread through the shed with a nice long tail. You see your, your shed is through here. It's, it's a little smaller than before because the cards are smaller, but I've seen people weave with cards as small as one inch, like, what would that be, two and a half centimeters? Really, really tiny. Okay, so we're going to turn all the cards forward.
Hopefully you can't hear my stomach growling. I haven't had lunch yet. I'm going to pass the shuttle through. We're going to pass the tail of the thread back through to anchor it all together. And we're just going to turn all the cards forward. We're not following with the pattern yet. Carefully turn all the cards forward again. Pass the shuttle through. Pass the tail through again. So passing the tail back through again helps prevent it from unraveling as you use or, or wear the, the piece. Turn the cards a third time. So sometimes I stick my middle finger through the shed and push all the cards forward. Helps keep them in line, just like my kids. All right, we'll pass the shuttle through and pass the tail through again. This is the last pass for the tail, so I'll just tuck that out of the way and then turn all the cards one last time. Oh, they're a little stiff. And then pass the shuttle through. I'm going to push and beat this down just a little bit. And so far we've got this kind of diamond zigzag pattern. This is exactly what it's supposed to look like for this first couple of passes. So for the first four picks, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to turn all the cards forward. Now I could just skip right to pick number five, um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning, turning all the cards forward. These cards are a little sticky, and I wonder if it's because they're new or because of the yarns that I'm using. I'm not sure. I'm using an 8 over 2 cotton yarn. It's, um, it's from Maurice Broussard. It's kind of become one of my new favorites because it's a lot smaller and lighter than the uh, Maysville, and so it makes a more delicate weave but it's still cotton and it's so it's inexpensive and it's uh, comes in a lot of different colors readily available at uh, at the, the woolery or other online weaving sites there really isn't a weaving store near me anymore there kind of is one but they don't carry very much that I've seen I mean it's been a while since I've been down there so it's just easier to order stuff online anymore Yeah, these are really stiff. Boy, I hope this gets easier as I go along. Is that a, oh, that's just a tension issue. Okay, pick number four. Yeah, I haven't been moving the, uh, the ruler along because I knew that it was four picks of exactly the same. So, one, two, three, four. Pick number five. Boy, I didn't use a very high contrast here, did I? So, cards number nine and ten go backwards. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten go backwards. Six forwards. Six? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six forwards. Three, six, and then two backwards. And the rest will go forwards. The next pick is the same.
Ooh, you can already start seeing some some of the pattern here. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so this one, two forward, six, eight backwards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight backwards, two forwards, one, two, three, four, five, six backwards, two forwards, and the rest backwards except the border cards. Then everything the same. I'm having a little bit of tension. It's, it's a little bit floppy. Unfortunately, I can't make the tension any tighter. Not until I've woven a little bit. Alrighty. Next one. I'm going to have Order cards forward, 12 going backwards, 2 going forwards. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 2 forwards, and the rest backwards except the border cards. And the next is repeating. I wonder, does this repeat everything twice? I think it does. Oh, that makes it so much easier. And the next row, uh, let's see. So we have border cards and then 10 going forward. So five, 10, two backwards and the rest forwards. one repeat. Now, it looks a little rough at the beginning and I think that was just the tension is still working itself out but boy that second motif looks really sharp. It looks gorgeous. And again it's kind of a hot mess on the back. Nothing much to talk about but yeah this this front bit. This is cool. These little Celtic knots are really amazing. And again it's not Celtic. It's Italian.
So if you have an Italian persona from the 12th century, I got something for you.